room, uh, just the board, and uh, we are all socially distant away from each other, so we're following protocols uh, to make sure that we remain uh, safe. Um, before we begin, a few announcements regarding the Zoom uh, to make sure that uh, you have the best viewing experience for uh, this meeting. Um, throughout the entirety of today's meeting, please ensure that your camera is in speaker view. Those currently in speaker view will have me as the main picture on their screen. If your view is something other than this, Please hover over the right hand corner of your screen where the title of your view will appear. If not already in speaker view, click here to change to speaker view. Uh, make sure that your sound is set to mute. Uh, we ask that you do this so that uh, there's no uh, background noise uh, while we're going through the meeting. Um, at the end of the meeting, we will have an open forum. Uh, we will ask that you utilize the chat feature to ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you type your name as well as your facility when asking. When sending a question, please ensure you are sending to all panelists and participants. Uh, should you need to ask a question or comment during other parts of the meeting, the chat feature is where you can do so. Uh, we want to thank you in advance for following these instructions. Uh, as well as being with us today. Uh, we certainly want to thank uh, the board that is here, uh, their willingness to be here. Uh, we want to thank uh, those from the section that are here to help us. Uh, Jackie Hobson is here running all of this because none of us are smart enough to do it. So we really appreciate her being here. Uh, Jeff Lofstead, the executive director of the South Florida PTA section is here as well. And we appreciate him being here. And then uh, Meredith Schuler, um, who has spent a lot of time helping us get prepared for this as well. So I want to make sure that we thank her uh, for helping out. Uh, before we get uh, any further into the meeting, I would like to just do a quick uh, invocation. And uh, so if you would, um, just give us a minute to do that. God, we thank you for this opportunity to be here, uh, even though it is virtually, Lord, to share this time with uh, the association and our uh, members in this chapter. Lord, during these uh, troubling and trying times, God, we ask that you give us all understanding and discernment, Lord, that you give us peace and contentment, Lord, that you would provide protection for each one in this chapter and their families. God, we ask these things in your name, amen. Um, we want to take a moment here to remember a friend of this chapter and of this section, uh, a great man, Brendan Cunningham. Um, we have a video uh, that we want to show you at this moment, uh, so please watch this video. On behalf of the South Florida PGA Hall of Fame Selection Committee, I want to congratulate you for being the next member of the South Florida PGA Hall of Fame. God, I don't deserve that. For 30 years, man, I've been doing it. And I love it. But I feel like I. I, 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 I <laughs> Brendan, I hear you're going into the Hall of Fame. Very well deserved, my friend. Can't think of anybody who does a better job, especially on those first tees. That golden voice of yours. Um, 
hope you're going to continue. I mean, I know you're going to be a Hall of Famer and a big deal now, but I hope we'll still see you on some of those first tees and uh, the events around the country. Thanks so much for everything you've done for us through the years. A honor well deserved. Hey, Brendan, it's uh, Dylan's grandfather. Um, congratulations on your induction into the Hall of Fame. It's well deserved. Um, I couldn't be happier for you. My family couldn't be happier for you. Well deserved. And I know that time and distance separates us some, but you've always been close to us, and we know that. And I want you to know that you're close to us. So, again, uh, to you and your wife and all your friends down there, uh, congratulations and enjoy it. Hey, Brendan, it's Peter Jacobson. Congratulations on being inducted into the South Florida PGA Hall of Fame. You deserve it, my friend. I think back to all the times we had on the first tee at, at tournaments like the Shark Shootout and the Chubb Classic, where you brightened everybody's day when we got to the tee. You always had a great joke, a great comment, a positive comment, which really uplifted everybody in their round and as they headed out for their day. So congratulations. Glad to see you're feeling so good. You deserve this, my friend. Those of you that knew Brendan, uh, you knew how special he was. Uh, you know, I always, uh, it was amazing to go to the first tee of our events and have him there uh, announcing us. And even though there was no one around, uh, he acted as though there were, everyone was there and it really made you feel like you were somebody. Um, so uh, we'll miss our dear friend, Brendan and ask you now to join me in a few moments of silence and remembrance of Brent. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, we will now start to get into the uh, meeting um, we will start with our committee reports, and our first report will be from our tournament chairperson, David Weiss. Thank you, Nathan. Good morning to all the chapter PGA members and associates. Uh, I hope that you and your families are staying safe during these unprecedented times. I never thought I would see things like this in my lifetime, this pandemic uncertainty usually reserved only for the movies on Netflix or HBO. But this too shall pass, and I know we will all become stronger uh, because of it. Uh, the good news was that most of us were able to maintain some sort of stability as many golf facilities remained open and surprisingly busy through these crazy times. Golf seemed to be the only activity that many used to escape the reality of the daily grind. The COVID-19 pandemic obviously impacted our chapter tournament schedule in a major way. Many events were understandably canceled as the health of players and the host staff were paramount in the decision-making process. Uh, I would personally like to extend my appreciation to these clubs who opened their facilities to allow us to conduct an event during these trying times. Uh, Gateway Country Club, the West Bay Club, the Veranda Club, Kensington Golf and Country Club, Copperleaf Golf Club, Bears Golf Club, and the Club Nelson Bank. Once again, thank you for allowing us to get out and play some golf and to network with our fellow professionals during these troubled times. Hopefully we return to whatever will be the new normal soon. 
allowing us to schedule and conduct the full chapter tournament season in 2021. I encourage everyone to be responsive and receptive of future committees when they contact you to ask you if you could host an event at your facility. Hosting an event for our professionals is a unique opportunity to showcase your facility, particularly during the slower summer season. If you haven't hosted an event in the last six to eight years, it might be your turn to step up and help fill the tournament schedule calendar. New sites are always exciting to visit, along with some of our traditional tournament venues. I would also like to thank my tournament co-chairperson this year, Tony Osborne, for all his help with the tournaments this season, starting playoff the first team and holding down the scoreboard area. His tournament ops expertise and knowledge was a huge bonus for everyone who competed in an event this summer. Thank you for your time. Please stay healthy and the best of luck in your upcoming season. Thank you. Thank you, David. And uh, just to, to add to that, we will be um, adding some new uh, folks to David's committee. Um, we have had uh, Andrew Filbert, uh, Danny Butts, and Zach Hammerberg agree to join David's committee. Uh, they will be helping him and um, getting uh, sites for our events. Uh, they'll be helping to run the events. Um, we are looking to, hopefully, we would like to add some uh, events for next summer, including something like a Pro Super or a Pro Scratch. Um, so these gentlemen will be joining in with that. They'll be helping us with partners and sponsors. Uh, so we thank them for their willingness to join in and become part of uh, the tournament uh, team. Um, our next presenter, uh, Bobby Conway for the Junior Golf. Um, Bobby cannot be here today, so his report will stand as written. Um, then we have the seniors chair, Perry Smith. Uh, Perry is also not going to be here, uh, so his report will stand as written. I know uh, Perry was uh, uh, hopeful that again next summer uh, he will also be able to uh, get in some more events for everyone uh, as we hopefully move into uh, more normal times. Uh, next up, we have our assistance chairperson, Sean O'Donnell. Sean is here and we'll be making some remarks. Good morning, fellow PJ members, associates. Thanks for tuning in today. I uh, hope you all had a great summer uh, on the assistance side. Uh, we successful tournament season. We had three events that were played. Uh, I'd like to extend thanks out there to uh, Kensington, to Michael Chesler at Kensington, also to Copperley, Jason Miller, and here at Bears Paul, Wayne Jarden. Uh, without the, the continued support, we wouldn't operate to such a good level. I'd also like to extend our thanks to the courses or clubs that were willing to host, but due to restrictions could not uh, again, next season we'll be back in contact and we thank you for your efforts this year. Uh, our final event of the year was our assistance championship here at Bears Ball, and that was on the 1st of October, 36 souls event. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for participating. Our average attendance at events throughout the year was about 40 golfers. Uh, we feel that's a pretty good turnout and uh, we hope that moving forward next year we can keep up these uh, good numbers. Uh, on behalf of Dan and myself, we thank you for everything and we look forward to seeing you all again next year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean, for that. Um, our next presenter is uh, Marty Hall. Uh, she, she is the section education chairperson and as such um, uh, basically does the education for all the chapters, including ours. And uh, she is not here, but we do have a video that she made. Uh, so you'll be seeing that video right now. Hello everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak at today's chapter meeting. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Marty Hall, and I am the education chair for the South Florida PGA. And I'm also the assistant director for the Florida Gulf Coast University PGA Golf Management Program. 
But today I just wanted to provide a brief update on our section education programs. We have lots of exciting things happening. Um, while we've all had a lot of challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we did end up with an opportunity uh, from the situation to take our education programs virtual over the summer months. And this has been a tremendous success. Uh, many of you may have participated in the operating under the new normal parts one and part two, or perhaps you attended all or one of the sessions of the three part teaching symposium. Um, all of these events had 120 to 140 participants. So we realized that this is a tremendous opportunity uh, where we are successfully able to connect with so many members and bring them education in a convenient way. And so we want to build on the success going forward and we are expanding our education program. Uh, we're expanding it both in terms of frequency so education will be offered now every other week. Um, and we're also expanding it in terms of the diversity of topics that will be offered. Um, so our goals for this new program are obviously uh, to build value for each PGA member, uh, their own value, um, also learning how to add value to your facility, and certainly adding value to our PGA brand. We want to provide education on a multitude of topics, um, everything from teaching and coaching to budgeting and finance, brand awareness, social media, relevant industry trends, national initiatives, career building, and so on and so forth. Um, all of these education seminars that we'll be offering are eligible for MSR credits. Um, so this should make it easier for you to meet uh, that quota. Um, and the times and days will vary. Um, so hopefully uh, these will be more apt to fit in your schedule. I just wanted to highlight a couple of the events that are coming up after today's chapter meeting. Uh, we will have an event on October 28th. Uh, we're still working out and fine tuning uh, the details, but please stay tuned to both your email and to the section website for, for more information. On uh, November 11th, we will be offering PGA Coach, and speakers will be Jeff Price and Ted Logan. And on November 24th, we will be offering a seminar called How to Build Your Own Brand, and the speaker will be Recreation Marketing. Um, each of these events will be delivered uh, via Zoom, but we will also have a second showing of each event the following day. Um, if you're unable to catch the event at its original scheduled time, if you follow it the second day um, after the event on Zoom, uh, you still will be eligible to earn the MSR credits. So you'll have two opportunities um, to participate and earn MSR for any of these events. Um, an important thing now that education is going to be more frequent and a little bit more nimble and flexible due to the virtual delivery, we encourage you to please reach out. Let us know what education topics that you would like to see. Um, you can either contact me. Uh, my email address is mhall at fgcu.edu or please feel free to reach out to Jackie Hobson uh, she is spearheading all of these efforts through the Section Education Office, and her email is jhobson at pgahq.com. So anyways, I just thank you for your time today, and I do hope that all of you are going to be active participants in the education program. Um, it's going to be more convenient to earn your MSR points. We're going to have expanded topics that are gonna be exciting and I think appeal to all of our diverse professional growth needs. And in the end, uh, we want to make the brand of all of us uh, in the section stronger. So and I think we're going to succeed with that. So thank you for your time today. All right, thank you, uh, Marty, for providing that uh, video and information for us. and. Uh, just as a uh, uh, addition to that, if you
can attend these education opportunities. As Marty said, the uh, ability to um, make yourself uh, more educated and more valuable as a PGA professional is an important thing. Uh, so we encourage you to uh, participate in these education events. Um, next, we're going to start with the reports of the officers. And our first report will be uh, Matthew Oakley, our uh, chapter secretary. Yep. Nathan, thank you. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to, to, to make a few uh, thank yous with the secretary report. Uh, I'd like to thank Nathan Gross, our, our president, uh, and Jeff Nixon, vice president this year for their outstanding work. Um, as you know, uh, these are, are tremendously difficult times. We all have a lot going on with our own facilities and to, to volunteer time to, to help our, our, our chapter and our section it is an amazing uh, task. Thank them and Jeff, thank you. Um, we'd like to thank uh, also uh, Bears Bob. Thank you very much, Dan, and everybody that put uh, all of your all of your members, all of your staff for allowing us to be here today. We really appreciate you having a venue uh, to host this. Thank you. Um, we'd also like to take a moment to thank uh, all of our all of our committees. Um, you know, these gentlemen and, and ladies do a tremendous job again on a volunteer basis to make sure that we have tournaments to play, that our assistants have a forum to be able to gather together and, and network and, and create value to their PGA membership. Also, like to thank uh, we've got representatives from, from our section office today. Uh, obviously, a long drive over here, Jeff. Thank you very much for being here today and supporting our chapter. We're very appreciative of you being here. Uh, Jackie, if you've not seen, she's our, our kind of been put with our technical uh, uh, direction today, and, and she is sweating bullets as you would imagine trying to get this Zoom to, to, to pull off. So, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, before I start the secretary report, I want everyone to know that it's a great day to be a PGA professional. Thanks for having me today. Um, I, I, as we all know and have all experienced, these past six months have been very difficult. As, as everyone else has done, I'd like to wish everyone, your families, your members, uh, uh, everyone in your circle, um, the best of health and, and, the, and the best of luck through these trying times. What's great though, uh, I believe just like you do, that we are going to come through this even better uh, as an association because of our passion for both the game and the business of golf. We'll get through this. The goal of this board is to enhance your PGA membership. Um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to, to help you today. If you need any type of support, please know that there are tremendous resources, physically, spiritually, emotionally, available to every PGA professional. If you're having any trouble through these times, please let us know. Um, certainly free to contact me. Uh, I'm the, my name again is Matt Oakley. I'm the PGA Head Golf Professional and Director of Golf at Worthington Country Club. And please contact me at the club there or at headpro at worthingtoncc.net. We'll be happy to, to help you or get you the right direction as you support. Um, on to the Secretary's report. Um, some, some fantastic news and, and tremendous milestones to, to uh, talk about today. First, we'd like to recognize our quarter century members since October 5th of 2019. Um, these ladies and gentlemen have, have ascended to 25 years of PGA membership. A tremendous accomplishment. Stephen C. Anderson, Thomas P. Anton, Paul J. Boland at Vineyards, Ryan, Ronald J. Bungarts at Arrowhead, Michael J. Chesnover, Kensington, Joe N. Conforti, Old Cypress, Andrew Deladonis, Golf Club of the Everglades, Andrea Drake, Vanderbilt Country Club, Steve Eisenberg is with Golf Concepts Academy, Gary Fredenberg, Bill Harley at Well Wildcat Run, Sam Olson, Royal Palm, Ron Paris, Pelican Marsh, Mark Stigelman is a lifetime member, David Weiss at Veranda, and Andrew Zillow at, Bull, at Bay Colony. Next, we'd like to identify our half century members. Think about that. 50 years as a PGA member in service to, 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 to golf, the game of golf, and, and their members in the US. Since October 5th, our half century members in the PGA, Ron Howell and Jim Jewell, what a tremendous accomplishment. We also have a great list of brand new PGA members. Since October 5th of 2019, here are our new PGA members. Welcome. Welcome to our association. Welcome to our club, as we say. Samantha Coleman is at Countryside. 
Eric Costa at Westbeck, Blake Davis, Pelican Sound, Alexander Dirksen, Windermere, Cameron Beatty, Westbeck, Alex Holt, also at Kensington. Uh, one of my assistants, Kyle Horvath, Worthington Country Club, bonus for everyone. Lance Krug, Colony, uh, The Colony, Max Laubach, Plantation, Matthew Licata, Rotonda Golf and Country Club, Gerardo Lugo Trejo at Panther Run, Jeremy Mangine at the Glaze, Christian Morrell, Heritage Bay, Lucas Muzzy, Bears Paw, Amanda Myers, Colonial, Zach Majerian, Pelican's Nest, Tom Nelson, Copperleaf, Ken Petter uh, is with uh, Florida Gulf Coast University, Graham Sell, Bay Colony, Andrew Simons, Naples Lakes, Zach Speck, Foxfire, James Tamasey, Miramar, Sam Venuti at Twin Eagles, Ashley Ward, Stonebridge, and Keith Whitemore at Kensington. Great job, everyone. Congratulations and welcome to the PGA. Unfortunately, since October 5th, we've also uh, unfortunately lost three of our, our, our PGA members, uh, beloved members, and we'd like to take a moment to recognize them and then I'm finished it a number of signs. Um, unfortunately, on, on July 15th here of, of 2020, we lost one of our life members, uh, Ronald Chimura. Also on March 24th of this year, uh, T. Sean Headley. And on February 7th of this year, Tim Gaff. So if we could, let's all pull our heads and have a moment of silence for these gentlemen. Thank you. And that is the end of the secretary's report. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, ma'am. Up next, we have our uh, vice president's report um, from Jeff Nixon. And uh, Jeff could not be here today, so I'll just go over a couple things uh, from his report. Um, you see some of the sponsors that we have there. Um, most of those numbers there are correct, but with the, uh, with the COVID, uh, didn't quite turn out just that way. But we still do want to thank uh, Signature Golf, Strixon, Cleveland Exhale and Asics, uh, Steve with Global Golf Sales, Brightview, um, as they were able to provide for us uh, during uh, this summer. Um, the chapter, um, as it stands financially, is in really good shape. Uh, obviously, you know, with the summer, uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on, uh, but as you can see from the, uh, the chapter project summary page, uh, we did pretty well. Um, we had some uh, revenue there. Um, we are still yet to receive, I think we got some golf pass revenue that is coming, uh, that will be provided for the chapter and uh, still a couple sponsors to, uh, to uh, get some uh, money from. So we're in very good standing as a chapter. Uh, Jeff will talk a little bit about the uh, uh, financial standing of the section uh, during his report, uh, but we are, we're very lucky to be in the position that we're in as a chapter. Um, that is the vice president's report. Uh, we will now move on to my report, the, the president's report. Um, I want to kind of second some of the things that Matt said here. Uh, this board that we have here, um, those of you that have done uh, these sorts of jobs in the past understand the time and the effort that is put in. You know, none of us are paid. Uh, but uh, these guys really do put forth an effort uh, to help uh, make our experience as PGA professionals a uh, better experience. And I really do thank them all uh, for everything that they have done. Uh, you see the list in our report. Um, I would appreciate it if at some point you could reach out to these gentlemen and uh, express your thanks and gratitude for what they do. Um, for this chapter. Uh, 
it certainly has been a crazy time for us all. Um, I have, through this though, I have been um, pretty amazed at how the PGA professional has pulled together. Um, when all this really started going down and none of us really knew what to do or what was going on, uh, we had some great leadership, certainly from our section um, as a Jeff and, and Meredith and that team uh, provided some great leadership and dealt with uh, uh, really with the governor and, and uh, lobbying for us and, and kind of getting some information as to what we needed to do there. But the, uh, the people in this chapter that really kind of shared with each other and had different ideas and and uh, helped each other kind of deal with this crisis um, as we were going through it. it was pretty amazing uh, to see that, you know, us all kind of pulling together and making sure that Goff uh, was able to maintain uh, during this period. So uh, I thank you all for that. Um, please feel free to keep sharing. Uh, we know that every day it seems like things are changing. Uh, we're certainly going into the winter months I know that there is some concern as people come back, uh, you know, what might happen. So uh, let's make sure that we stay in touch with each other, uh, that we share our best practices and our ideas as we deal with this, and just to check in with each other and, you know, make sure we're all doing okay, because this is certainly an interesting time. And the support uh, from each professional that we get, I think does a lot of good. Uh, to hear someone else that's kind of going through the same thing and how they're experiencing it um, is an important part of, uh, of getting through this. Um, so I thank all those that have been a part of that and uh, hopefully we can continue that even, even as we get busier uh, going into the season. Um, we do I do want to encourage everyone, and, and I have received some phone calls and emails and different things, but I do want to encourage everyone to reach out to me about uh, any questions, any issues that you might have that are going on with the chapter. Um, we can't really fix things that we're not sure that are broken, uh, but when people do reach out to us, uh, believe me, when I, I uh, contact this board, I contact uh, Jeff and Meredith and you know, try to find uh, answers to any questions and solutions to any problems that we might have. So uh, please feel free to do that at any time. Um, as we, as David kind of mentioned earlier and uh, Marty has kind of gone over, uh, you know, there are still some things that we are doing as a chapter now that we're going into season, some of those are stopping, uh, but we do look forward to 2021 Hopefully as a new year, uh, we'll see some uh, return to normalcy and we can provide you all uh, what we would like to provide you as a chapter. Um, I know in December we have our section board meeting. So at that time, we'll be discussing anything that uh, needs to be discussed. And I look forward to sharing that information with you all uh, as we need to do so. Um, that is pretty much uh, my report. Uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas, please reach out to me. It's a pleasure to serve as this uh, chapter president. I enjoy it and uh, I hope to, uh, to be able to work for you and, and do what uh, needs to be done for you. Um, at this point, uh, our District 13 Director, Mark Van Dyke, is going to provide a report on our national business. Um, he is not here, but we do have a video to show you. Uh, so please pay attention to this video. Hello, everybody. This is Mark Van Dyke, PGA Director of Golf at Fort Lauderdale Country Club and your District 13 Director, serving the PGA of America. I hope you're all well during this pandemic, and I'm addressing you, obviously, virtually for your chapter meetings. Hopefully we'll be getting back to real meetings in person sooner than later. Just want to give you a few updates on what's going on in the world of national affairs, starting with the 104th annual meeting. Um, as you know, the annual meeting is typically a three or four day event, but we've condensed it to three hours due to the fact that we have to do this virtually as well. Um, 
So the schedule events on Thursday, October 29th from two to five will be as follows. We will have the outgoing directors. We will also hear from the officers and CEO reports, and we will go to consideration of resolutions. We will immediately go to the secretary election procedure, nomination speeches and seconds, votes, caucuses, and votes again. Um, the four candidates will run, and once we've voted in the first round, if all four stay in the race, we will vote again. We will have a caucus and vote again. If all four want to stay in the race in the second round, the, the, the candidate with the least amount of votes will be eliminated. Same thing if we go to a third round. This expedites the process for the national election, and we will have our secretary um, that day. The installation of officers will be the last order of business. President Jim Richardson will be sworn in, as well as Vice President John Leonard, and of course, our new secretary. I want to give kudos to Tom Brawley, our senior director of membership, for all his hard work in putting this together. Just a couple brief um, updates on properties. Palm Beach Gardens. The staff is getting ready to move into the new, re newly renovated 100 building at Palm Beach Gardens sometime in mid-December. We will be added a 300 building, which we currently lease. The cost of no renovation for the 100 building is well under budget. And furthermore, we're going to be able to sublease sub parts of it uh, during the time we're there. The CLP has been sold. I know there was some speculation there. We're getting out of a four lease, four month lease as, as well with our new buyer, who is AHA Residential, bought the property, and that triggered the expansion of the PGA Golf Club practice facility. Some of you that have already been to the golf club have seen the work being done. I could promise you it'll be state-of-the-art and a fantastic representation, representation of what we do um, for PGA of America and our members. Moving on to Frisco, the construction of the building has begun and with everything on time and projected well under budget, the building is to be done by early 22. Uh, we will move the staff in immediately thereafter and hopefully have a grand opening sometime in June of 2022. The golf courses are coming along nicely. Architect Gil Hans and Jim, Jimmy Terry, our general manager, are very happy with the progress. And a special shout out to our chief operating officer, Daryl Crawl, who is completely responsible for the project there and has done an amazing job on all fronts. I'd like to now turn to the associates and the PGM update. As you know, this has been a hot topic of discussion. Based on the recommendations of the education, employment, and membership committees, as well as recommendations from a task force committee created by President Whaley, the board is looking at updates to the associate and GMU programs over the next last nine months. We've been talking about it for a long time since January. We're looking at a new direction with better price and an opportunity. The current system is not working. Fact of this is, fact of the matter is, the current number of associates and PGM students has declined 50% in the last five years and has not grown at all in the previous 15. Data-driven numbers have given us a direction to improve on this. Associates want virtual education, period, they do. Number one reason why associates aren't furthering into business is because of the work-life balance and the compensation. Those are the two detriments in getting into the business right now. We currently have 25,000 active in life members, but only less than 5,000 associates and PGM students. So you can see the downward slide here. We need to get more associates into the pipeline for the future of our association. The board is tasked again to three committees, employment, membership, and education, to come up with a high-level solution. They've collaborated, and we've agreed on the following. Core education will be virtual and then to be completed in 24 months. We will not, and I repeat, will not reduce the standards of membership. We will remove all barriers and aids in recruitment. We will allow more competent students and, pro and prospects to come in. For example, college players or former tour players, we need to capture these young men and women as they have the pedigree to be great PGA members. The only issue from the three committees right now is how many trips would be necessary for an associate to go to Frisco. Currently, golf operations and executive management is calling for one trip, but teaching and coaching is calling for two trips. We are working on that right now, but we are just thinking of the PGA associate and and everything with respect to cost. Obviously a second trip to Frisco is a very, very expensive venture for an up and coming associate member. The timeline and communication leading up to this point, just so everyone knows, the discussion was had at the PGA show in January that something needed to be done with the PGA programs at the GMUs and it would be a call to action. The board was presented with information on a possible GMU change back in March at the spring planning session Letters were sent to the GMU stating that there are 
changes to the program coming. The board has spent countless hours since March, I can assure you this, because I've been involved in every meeting. And what I said earlier is the recommendation. Of course, I mentioned the ad hoc committee had PGM directors, PGA staff, officers, and executive directors. In fact, Jeff Lofsted is on the committee. The PGA of America is not going to renew the current contracts. We are not terminating the GMUs as all schools may reapply under the new system. Universities may opt out if they wish. Unfortunately, some of the programs there are working and they're welcome to opt out. Most of the GMUs are fully on board with the changes, all agreeing that changes are needed based on what I said earlier about the downslide. Internships will continue and welcome diversity, second careers and student athletes. And if 4.0 is adopted, it's important to note that the program will not start until 2023. I know this is a very, very, very sensitive subject over the last couple of months. And please know that myself, along with the entire board, officers, and everybody in that room are doing everything we can for the PGA of America's members and associates. We are here to serve you. We work together to do what's best for the association, period, now and forever. Decisions aren't easy, and some of these decisions are very, very hard, but this is certainly one of them. We are looking at all the options and being agilent on how we should move forward. Just know that we're all here to serve you, the PGA member and associate. The decision and all decisions for that matter are driven by the entire board of directors. Now I'd like to switch to the PGA championship. It was a very successful week concerning all the challenges. Um, it was a fantastic week for me to be there with the PGA of America staff, as well as working with the PGA Tour, uh, being able to call the player names the day, uh, the second round of the event was a humbling experience for me. Um, being able to see our very own Justin Birch out there playing and spending some time with him in the hotel was fantastic as well. Um, our new partners at ESPN bought us a whole new demographic of viewers. ESPN's coverage was 70% higher than TNT's last year. We focused heavily on our 20 PGA members. CBS and ESPN did an incredible job all week long. And if you had the ESPN Plus app, you had phenomenal coverage all week as well. The final round in Eastern primetime and around the country had just under 7 million viewers watching the final round of the PGA Championship. That is unprecedented and fantastic. The event brought us people together. It brought us from people all over the world to see what the PGA of America is all about. It truly was a successful week and I gotta give kudos to Chief Champions Officer Kerry Hay and his entire team for running a flawless event. In closing, I would like to leave you with a message on just how important you are. We are the front line and the last line of the great sport we all love. My job as your district director is to give you the information and communicate to you as much as I can what's going on so you can perform at your very, very best. Please reach out to me if you have any questions at all regarding national affairs. It is truly a privilege and honor to serve you as your District 13 director. Have a great meeting. All right, I'd like to thank Mark for that report regarding uh, national issues. Um, and now we will get to our section issues as our executive director, Mr. Jeff Lofstead, will come to give a report. Thank you, Nathan. It's uh, nice to be here at Bears Ball. First time I've been here since uh, the renovation of the clubhouse, so it's great. Uh, so it's good to be here. At I, I'm not sure that I'll, I'll get used to uh, these types of meetings. Uh, certainly, we uh, did, did a virtual meeting for the annual meeting. We did the Southeast chapter meeting earlier this week, and, and now this meeting. Uh, virtual meetings are certainly a little bit different after 25 years of uh, in-person meetings, uh, but it, it gives us the opportunity uh, to get some information out. And, and I want to thank uh, the board that's here with the Southwest chapter. It's been mentioned earlier, uh, but I, I want to thank the board and all the committees uh, certainly Nathan uh, for the leadership during this time, being a part of Nathan serves on the section board and is a great representative of the Southwest chapter. So it's great to have Nathan in our boardroom. You know, as I prepared some notes to uh, go over for this meeting, there, there certainly are a lot of topics that I could uh, begin with. And it, I guess it seemed appropriate that I would begin with uh, COVID-19 and, and the current situation, uh, how that's uh, impacted operations, What's it look, look like for all of you? Uh, it, it's interesting for, for our members in that uh, this 
really kind of started at the tail end of your last season and then, then dragging into your current season where uh, those others uh, that may be up in the uh, northern parts of the country are uh, hopefully only going to be affected in one season uh, for this. But uh, looking, looking back to uh, late March and, and early April and, and where we are now, I, I, as we talked earlier in the room, I, in some ways it feels like it's been a couple of years since then, and in other ways, it feels like it was just uh, yesterday that that all this happened. But as you're all aware, Governor DeSantis moved uh, the entire state of Florida into phase three of the reopening plan, and and what that means uh, from the golf standpoint is that uh, at least here in Southwest Florida, all decision making is, is now up to you at your individual facility and, and what makes uh, the most sense for you. Back in April and early May, PGA of America, along with all the national allied associations, uh, came together and developed what's called the uh, Back to Golf Guidelines. And the Back to Golf Guidelines were uh, intended to be recommendations and suggestions for you uh, and your golf operation as you move forward uh, with, with this pandemic and, and how you wanted to make decisions that were in the best interest of your membership. The, the, the guidelines when they were created were uh, intended to mirror what was introduced by the White House with three phases of reopening. What we found since that time is that every state seemed to have their own definition and terminology of uh, what reopening meant in, in the state of Florida. What happened is that the counties uh, were empowered to make uh, even, even stricter measures and, and this certainly has happened in particular in Southeast County where uh, for the state of Florida, anyhow, Southeast part of Florida has 41% of the cases right now uh, for COVID. But as you go forward, all, all decision-making now is, is up to you. And, and certainly we've been sharing a lot of best practices and, and you've been reaching out to uh, your fellow members. There's no question the uh, number one issue probably facing all of you right now is the uh, shared carts and, and how we handle uh, shared carts going forward. There, there's no question that uh, shared carts has uh, helped to pace the play. I've, I've often said this is going to be a bad habit to break for those that are uh, riding in shared carts. The, the players enjoy the shared carts. Um, but I, I think we all know from an operator standpoint um, that, you know, at, at worst, this is completely unsustainable uh, for the industry. At best, it's very, very difficult. Uh, I've, I've talked to a lot of superintendents here recently that uh, have indicated that they're seeing wear marks on their golf course that are typical uh, that they would see in, in March. Uh, and, and we're still in the growing season. And, and I think we all know uh, what will happen when we get to uh, December, January, February, and, and certainly into March when the grass is not growing and, and the effect that that will have on the golf course. And so uh, I, I know that's a big decision uh, for all of you, and, and we'll do our best to, uh, to share information on what others are doing. Uh, golf cart dividers are uh, popular right now. They, they at least give uh, the players some feeling of, of safety whenever they go out on the golf course. It, it allows, from an operator standpoint, allows you to get back to a little bit more normal operation. We have a partner called Golf Safer uh, that is involved in that and, and can install those dividers. I, I know a lot of golf facilities here in the Southwest chapter have done that, certainly uh, on the East Coast where there's still county ordinances in place that the only way you can share carts is, is with golf dividers or uh, or mass or same house, household. So uh, I, I know that's a critical decision as you go forward. We'll, we'll do our best to get information uh, out to you. Uh, earlier, Nathan talked about the, uh, the financial ramifications. One of the, really one of the first things we did um, back in, in March when we, uh, in, in effect, shut down operations uh, for the section, mainly events, is, is we started trying to project out financially what this was gonna do uh, to the section uh, we're very fortunate. We have we have a very strong uh, reserve fund. Uh, it, it was something that at that time we felt like we could withstand. In June, we we did what I would consider to be a complete budget scrub, and went through our uh, entire budget and, and tried to do a, a reforecast. And, and fortunately, uh, that reforecast that we did at that time uh, showed that uh, we were actually going to perform above budget uh, at the end of the year uh, because of some of the, the savings that. Uh, that we had to do. So finan financially, we're fine. You know, I, I think the other part that, that maybe uh, gets lost when we're talking about COVID-19 that we don't focus as much on that we probably should focus on. And, and I think maybe in a lot of ways, that's typical of what we do oftentimes. 
is we don't focus on the positive of what's come out of this. And uh, when, when you look back to March and, and April and even into May in and, and a lot of states, uh, rounds it had decreased uh, year over year by double digits. And then uh, all of a sudden golf opened back up and it, it was realized by a lot of people that uh, their desire and passion to play that had been lost, they had found again. It uh, is an activity that fortunately for us, we weren't competing uh, with a lot of other activities from a discretionary time and uh, income standpoint. So we, we really had the ideal support to, to lead uh, the comeback with this. And June, July, and August, uh, we saw well into double digit increases in rounds year over year. And in fact, at this point, uh, with favorable weather throughout the fall months, we, we do expect it that year end, we will uh, we'll, we'll continue that double digit increase. And, and, and I, I, I think as, as I project forward, what is exciting to me is, is the opportunity to keep these new people in the game because there's no question the avid golfers have played more golf and, and we do know that getting avid golfers to play more golf uh, will make things better but we also know getting new people into the game keeping them in the game uh, will also help us and i think we we can learn a lot for those of us that uh, lived through the golf boom of the late 90s and some of the mistakes that were made at that time by building more and more golf courses we can learn from some of those mistakes try to strategize and, and keep uh, some of these players in the game I, I also think one of the other positives that, that I found uh, with, with what has happened here is, is I think the PGA professional at the golf facility uh, has even become more valuable. I, I've always felt like the PGA professional was uh, the all-star and uh, the most important person at every golf facility. But I, I think throughout this process, what has also shown is that everybody's going to the PGA professional to uh, ask for help and how to lead the way on uh, smart operations for what we're going through. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, that what I've seen is that the PGA professional value of the facilities it has even increased in my opinion. And, you know, from a section standpoint, uh, once we got started um, back in uh, late June here in the Southwest chapter of Bonita Bay, we, uh, we went through what we would consider to be a pretty normal tournament season. Participation was uh, up in most all events, in some cases record participation. One area that we as staff were very concerned about uh, at, at the start of this was uh, what would happen to uh, partnerships as uh, companies uh, were facing the same types of situations that everybody was facing, decisions they had to make on, on cutting back spending. And uh, we were fortunate that almost every tournament purse throughout the course of the summer was up compared to last year. Uh, some of that's due to increased participation, some of that's due to uh, our lack of ability to do food and beverage functions, but uh, nonetheless, participation was uh, was great, and uh, our events came off pretty well. We were very happy with them. Uh, we still have uh, three uh, key events that, that we have here in this chapter coming up. What, one of the things that we've heard from uh, PGA professionals is that they wanted the opportunity to have in-season playing opportunities where uh, they could entertain their members. And on November, November 12th at Cypress Lake, uh, we'll be doing what we are calling our first annual Cadillac Invitational. It's a four-person pro-am team uh, that also benefits our foundation. It'll be a great event for the amateurs with the tea favors we have involved. A uh, great purse for the professionals and uh, an event that we hope will, will become a, a staple on the calendar for years to come. So we hope to see you at, uh, at that event. On December 14th, we are going to be conducting our Pro Lady Championship, which is also a four-person uh, pro-am team. We expect that to be here in this chapter and, and hopefully we'll have uh, more information on, on that event here soon. And then on December 18th, we'll be conducting our second annual Quarry Pro-Am uh, at the Quarry, thanks to uh, Bob Radens and the membership there. Bob uh, attracts a lot of his members to play in this event, but we also open it up to chapter members to, to bring a team, also a four-person Pro-Am team. Uh, so we'll, we hope that you'll be able to uh, join one of those events uh, or multiple events uh, this fall and entertain your members. Today uh, kicked off the Senior PGA Professional Championship, actually the first member championship that PGA of America uh, has conducted since the pandemic started. And we have 13 of our members that are participating in this event, including Dan Eastlip and Gene Feger from this chapter here. We certainly uh, wish them the best of luck as uh, they move forward in this championship. And, and certainly one of uh, all their goals is to qualify for the Senior PGA Championship, which will be played uh, next May. Uh, next week, we have uh, our annual cup matches, the 40th annual cup matches that we do at the North Florida section. Those will be 
uh, played here in the Southwest chapter at Club Pelican Bay. The uh, Southwest chapter, as usual, is uh, well represented on the team with Justin Birch, Adam Miller, Jason Martin, Andrew Filbert, Justin Smith, and Gene Feeder. Uh, we look forward to winning the, the cup back from uh, North Florida this year. One, one of the uh, opportunities that uh, oftentimes uh, we will get questions on, on how PGA members can support the South Florida PGA Charitable Foundation. And, and it, it, it's not possible for everyone to host an event. It's not possible for everybody to do a golf marathon. But, but one thing that's very easy to do that could have really meaningful impact for our foundation is a program through Amazon. On, online shopping and in the last couple of days, I'm sure we're all well aware it was Prime Day and online shopping will only increase uh, as we move forward over the next few months of the, the holiday season. Amazon Prime is a, uh, Amazon Smile, excuse me, is a, a program that Amazon has where you can select a charitable foundation and 5% of all of your purchases will accrue back to that charitable foundation. You still have the same selection, the same pricing. It's just a matter of whether you're in the app or you shop online of going to the Amazon Smile link searching for the South Florida PGA Charitable Foundation when you select that, then going forward, 5% of all of your purchases will uh, accrue back to our foundation. One of the uh, communication tools that we've been working quite a bit on here recently uh, is a app called Clubster. And, and the app is intended to be an, an app that will help alleviate the reply all emails that, that are going around all over the section right now. Everybody. Uh, certainly is trying to, to gather information from others on what they're doing. Uh, but Clubster functions similar to a Facebook, similar to a message board that, that maybe you've been on in the past where uh, topics can be uh, added in there and then you can go in at your leisure and uh, post into those topics, into those threads, and also consume that at, at your leisure. And, and as opposed to getting various emails and reply all threads that are certainly well intentioned, but uh, easily lose focus based on uh, the response that comes back and become uh, difficult at best to read whenever you're looking on a mobile device. Clubster will be a, a tool that we will start threads on uh, items such as shared carts or uh, guest policies or bumper rakes or flag sticks, whatever that might be, information that we know all of you are trying to secure from one another. We'll start threads on that and, and you will be able to access that. And the recap email from at the meeting today, we will share information uh, on the Clubster app. And then in addition to that, we, we certainly have our Blue Golf app that I would also, if you don't have, encourage you to download. It contains all chapter and section information as well as uh, the section directory if you're looking for uh, contact information to your fellow members. Uh, lastly, it, it was talked about a little bit earlier and uh, perhaps Kathy is going to talk about it in, in her video uh, coming up, but um, they, they certainly are troubling times uh, for everyone and, and difficult times for everyone. And PGA of America has a program called Support Link. If, if you need help, uh, whatever that help might be, uh, Support Link is, is a great tool for you uh, where you can get uh, confidential counseling, whatever you might need. Uh, so I'd, I'd encourage you if, if, if you're looking for that type of help, it, it's available to you. It's, it's a program that PGA of America offers. And, and I hope that you'll be able to take advantage of that. Uh, so, you know, in closing, I, I, Nathan mentioned earlier, I, I want to thank uh, Jackie Hobson for uh, what she's done and putting together these, these virtual presentations. Uh, they're not easy. They're uh, certainly stressful and making sure that they, uh, they come off the right way, but uh, we hope they've been of value to you. Uh, it, it allows us to get the messages out that we feel like we need to get out. Uh, so thanks to Jackie for uh, all of her work on that. And, and lastly, if there's anything we can do uh, to help you as, as you move forward, please reach out to us in the section. Uh, you're, you're not bothering us in any way. Uh, when you reach out and looking for information, that's what we're here for. We're, we're here to uh, service you and, and provide you what you need uh, so that you can do your job the best you can and, and the most efficient you can. So uh, reach out to us, even if it's, if it's questions on uh, what we're hearing on, on how other facilities are handling certain situations. Uh, with COVID. We're, we're there to help and, and we'll be there to help. So again, thank you. Best of luck as uh, you move forward into your busy time. All right. Thank you very much, uh, 
Jeff, we appreciate it. Um, Jackie, can you stand up and put your face in the camera? Uh, so people can know who's here and helping us out. Uh, so they can recognize you. This is Jackie. She's the one we've been talking about the whole time who is doing a great job and uh, helping us deliver this meeting. Uh, so thank you very much for that, uh, Jackie. Um, up next, we have uh, Kathy Grayson, our PGA employment consultant. Uh, she has uh, provided a video that uh, we're going to show at this time. Good morning, I'm Kathy Grayson, career consultant for the South Florida section. It is nice to see all of you over Zoom once again. Welcome to October. How did that happen? It has been a very busy summer and suddenly we are embarking on a new season. So I hope each and every one of you have had an opportunity to get some rest and maybe take a little vacation before all of our snowbirds return. Uh, they will be back soon. Uh, some of them are actually already back. So I wanna give you just a brief update on career services and what's happened uh, with employment in this section. First of all, I wanna let you know that Bruce Lubach, who is the career consultant in the Southwest section, and Carol Pence, who is the consultant in the Northern California section, have announced their retirement. Uh, Jason Bowes, who currently oversees Wisconsin, will be relocating to Arizona to serve that Southwest uh, uh, section and Sun Country. And we have posted uh, Jason's position in Wisconsin and also Carol's position in Northern Cal. So any of you interested in becoming a career consultant, uh, feel free to call me and I can fill you in on the details. Uh, so we're certainly looking for some amazing people to join our team. Uh, we love our jobs and, and what we do. And again, happy to uh, deliver any of those um, details to you if you're interested. Uh, PGA Job Board, uh, I've reached out to all of you in several different forms of communication, be it phone calls, campaigns through Salesforce, emails, and through the section newsletter. I do want to let you know that we are no longer using the Career Links platform. So if you have not gone ahead, um, logged on to PGA.org, updated your preferences, please do so. And I want to encourage everyone to do that, not only for uh, job seeking opportunities, but also for mentorship and leadership reasons. So if you're not looking for a job, it's great to keep abreast of what's going on in the section and what jobs are open so that maybe you can let your colleagues know that maybe you're looking for another opportunity or maybe some, some of our younger professionals who are ready to take that next step. So I encourage all of you to go on to job board uh, or pga.org and please update your preferences um, to look for other opportunities if, if you are so inclined and to also mentor that younger generation because that's so important as a PGA professional. Um, I want to give you an update on PGA executive searches. Uh, our section leads the nation in the number of searches that we have facilitated for our employers. Uh, this summer uh, we've uh, conducted 10. So we are finalizing Coral Creek right now, uh, which is in Placida, Florida. Jim West actually facilitated that because I had so many going on at the same time. And uh, as we work together as a team, he was connected to Tom Noyce, who's the general manager up there. So we, uh, we asked Jim, or I asked Jim for assistance in, in conducting that search. So that'll be announced uh, probably in the next couple of weeks there uh, in final interviews right now. Additionally, we've added another search level to our repertoire. Uh, we have a level one search now that we're offering, and it is not an executive search, so I would not be involved from uh, start to finish. Uh, but we do have this category that allows the employer to post a position and ask some qualifying questions. And also we create a portal for the resumes to be housed so that inboxes aren't um, 
inundated. So if for some reason you're interested in that level one search, um, that is $1,000 uh, right now. And uh, it also gives us the ability to still help influence uh, compensation, which I know is so important to all of you. Um, we've done six of those level one searches this summer, and they've been very successful, and we've had some great feedback from our PG professionals and employers who have utilized that service. Uh, education, uh, we will continue to deliver education. I know the section is offering weekly education now, which some of those I, I will participate in. Um, as a team, we are also working on different um, topics of communication and, and education that we would deliver on a quarterly basis. Recently, I worked with Dean Candell with uh, GPG and did a webinar for resume writing, a podcast for resume writing, and we will continue to, to do that as well, as, as well as work with the PGM universities on delivering some education for them as well. Um, I want to remind you that as we go into season, I know you're going to get very busy, but updating your resume during this time is, is really the best time to do that. I want to remind the younger professionals uh, to continue to write down your SOAR stories. And again, that's an acronym for situations that you encounter, obstacles that you overcome, actions that you take to solve those problems, and the results that it produces. And those are great stories for interviews, great stories for accomplishment statements on your resume. So if you have some opportunity over the holidays and you have some downtime when our snowbirds hopefully go back um, home for the holidays, and you, you want to refresh your resume, um, feel free to reach out to me. Again, it's the best time. Uh, during the summer is so crazy busy with hiring um, that sometimes I don't have an opportunity to help you. So please reach out during the off season and uh, keep your resume up to date. I'm wishing you all the very best and especially a happy and healthy season. Uh, please know that I'm here for you. And if you need anything, please reach out. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much uh, for that, Kathy. Um, for those of you that know Kathy, you know how great she is and uh, what she does to help out. Um, so if you need her, she's fantastic. Reach out to her, uh, she'll get back to you. Um, and uh, I would encourage you to, to take advantage of her expertise and experience. Um, at this time, uh, we're going to move to our awards. Uh, obviously, this being a different year, we are not able to do our awards live at this time, but we think we came up with a pretty good idea uh, on how to deal with that. So our awards chairperson, uh, Justin Font, will come up and kind of explain what's happening. And uh, Justin, come on up. Thank you, Nathan, and, uh, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the virtual chapter meeting. Uh, what a great way to do this, and, and we're fortunate to be able to still have our, our chapter meeting here at Ferris Ball. Uh, just a special thank you to the committee that was involved in, in this year's chapter awards, uh, uh, recognition to, to Ben Pittman from Estero Country Club, uh, Perry Smith, who, uh, who was the most recent chapter chair, uh, had agreed to, to stay on, and, and we appreciate Perry's support and assistance uh, through the chapter awards. John Gardner, who is uh, PGA retired, Jake Pliskowski from Naples National, and Kevin Swan at Mediterra, all were uh, very valuable resources. So I thank you for uh, for their support and their help uh, in, in facilitating the chapter awards this year. Uh, our process was a little bit different for chapter awards than it has been in the past. It more lined up with how section awards flowed and, uh, and also kind of moved to the summer time frame. Uh, to make it easier for, for people to be able to complete those forms, uh, those nomination forms when sent out. So we launched nominations on June 1st. Uh, I sent an email to all uh, chapter PGA professionals as a, as a call to action to nominate your fellow professionals. Uh, that was done on June 4th and uh, we closed the nominations on July 15th. Uh, the section did uh, send three emails to notify 
individuals if they have been nominated for section awards, I'm sorry, for chapter awards, uh, and ask them to complete their nomination forms. We did eventually extend that time frame to September 18th to complete chapter award nominations. Um, the committee then met virtually to discuss the applications and ultimately select our winners in each one of our categories. Um, I'd like to talk about the merchandiser of the year category for just a second. Uh, while we did have individuals that were nominated for the three Merchandiser of the Year categories, we did not have successful completed applications for Merchandiser of the Year, either private, resort, or public. I think it's important to note that uh, people take time to, to nominate individuals and specifically the Merchandiser of the Year category. While you may not be the, uh, you may have a Merchandiser, you may have other people that are involved in uh, helping facilitate that program at your club. Uh, people do take a look at the uh, job that you do as a golf professional uh, and think very highly of that. And, and I do think it's important to complete the applications uh, should you be nominated. And would encourage you to continue to nominate individuals uh, and if nominated, fill out those applications. It's a, it's a great representation of you as a professional and as your club as well. So. Uh, please take a moment to do that in the future. We would love to be able to have uh, discussions about who to uh, award chapter awards to. Uh, that being said, uh, if you have any feedback or uh, suggestions, I, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing from some of you. Uh, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear your impression on chapter awards and uh, anything that we can be doing there. In preparation for the virtual meeting, uh, we did uh, prepare a video for chapter award winners. Uh, so if Jackie, if you could play that now, that would be fun. Ah, then you've been asked here today because uh, the chapter wants to recognize you as the Henry B. Watkins Award winner. Oh my goodness. For the uh, Amateur of the Year. Um, the board recommends you to the Works Committee, and the Works Committee had a unanimous decision to give you this award. As someone who helps promote the game of golf and PJ professionals, and just everything that you do for all of us in the chapter, and we just want to thank you and uh, maybe us the energy Watkins Award winner for 2020 for the uh, chapter. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm I'm shocked. I'm touched. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, good. Well, you very much deserve it. We all have the utmost respect for you, and uh, what we'll be doing is. Uh, at a later time, we'll get you to apply because we're doing our meeting virtually uh, this uh, this time. But this will be going out to everybody in the chapter and they'll see it. So, congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. You got it, man. Hey, Abby. How are you? Good to see you again. Yes. So, you know, obviously, I am uh, also the chapter awards chair as well as the uh, health professional. Uh, so, we are virtual next week for our chapter meeting. Uh, and because of that, we've been making our rounds today uh, to meet with uh, chapter award winners. And I'm, I'm here to congratulate you on being the assistant golf professional of the year for the Southwest chapter. So, congratulations. The committee was very excited to select you. You uh, did a fantastic job in. Uh, what you talked about on the merchandising front. Uh, so we're very, very uh, proud to acknowledge you as the assistant professional of the year. Uh, so this video will be shown next week uh, virtually. Great! <laughs> uh, so if you wouldn't mind, take a second and, yeah. and let everybody know what this award does mean to you and you know, put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah, that does. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. I can't thank enough for this section. I mean, everybody has been so supportive and I can't believe, you know, there's so many golf clubs down here and so many people that are deserving of this. And I just appreciate, you know, everyone supporting us as professionals, especially assistants and helping us on our journey in the PGA. So thank you very much. That's Absolutely. Really great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> the day is actually a little bit more special as well, uh, because not only are you the assistant professional of the year, but your boss is the Bill Strauss ball winner <laughs> for the chapter as well. Congratulations. <laughs> Dang, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, Obviously, that is a that is a huge award, and, and we're very proud to, to honor you with that. Uh, well deserving as somebody who leads and mentors and develops in our chapter, and that is exactly what the award is about. Uh, and you are you are the epitome of that. So we are uh, we're thrilled to honor you as the 2020 Southwest Chapter Bill Strasbaugh Award. Thank you, Absolutely. 
I, uh, I've won this award before and uh, I'm humbled because I know there's a lot of golf professionals that are doing an awful lot of work. Um, I love what I do. I love my profession. I love my peers. And uh, I just try to keep giving back. And um, I don't do any of these things for any of this kind of recognition. Uh, but I guess on behalf of uh, my peers, um, thank you for the award. Thank you, Justin, for, I mean, it's, it, it's touching. It really is. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well deserved. Thanks. Thanks for all you do. And Abby, thank you very much. Yeah, as well. no, thank you too. Hi, Renee. Renee, I'm Justin Defont. I serve as the chapter awards chair here for, for the chapter. This is Nathan Gross. You know Nathan. Hi, Nathan. How Hi. are you? We're nice to see you. To surprise you, as you know, we are virtual this year for our chapter meeting. Uh -huh. I'm here to congratulate you on it being our player development chapter award. Oh, my gosh. Class. Well, thank you so How much. How yes. wonderful is that? <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we are videotaping the show your peers next week. Uh, yes. And we're very excited to honor you. Oh, well, thank uh, you. To congratulate you. Wow. And certainly the work that you do here is outstanding. Uh, and you're certainly a leader of player development, so we're, we're very excited to have you. Well, thank you so much. It's great to, gosh, get an award. I've been in the South Florida section for like 15 years, so I'm truly honored. So your work with your work at the Civil with Women's Golf Association, and we're as a committee very excited to, to recognize you, and congratulations on being our 2020 chapter winner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Southwest Chapter PGA, for nominating me as the Youth Player Development Award this year. I can't thank you enough for, for this award. And, and just to say, as a young PGA professional, it means so much uh, that I have had an impact with these kids' lives and the ability to help grow the game. And so I actually have the kids here today, and we have something we want to say. Thank you, PGA! Um, I'm here on behalf of the uh, chapter, as president of the chapter. Uh, you were nominated for the uh, Professional Development uh, Award winner for the uh, Southwest chapter, and you are the winner. Oh, well, thank you. So I'm just here to uh, let you know and congratulate you on, uh, on that achievement. Uh, as you know, we're not doing the meeting uh, live this year, we're doing it virtually. So. We're going by and uh, meeting up with all the award winners and letting them know and getting it on video and we're going to play it for everyone uh, during the meeting. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Very good. The committee was uh, very impressed by the work that you've done and uh, helping with fellow professionals. So if you have anything that you'd like to say, then you can say it or... No, I just thank you again. I know just, uh, you know, I'm here to help all my peers, you know, whatever expertise that I, I have. So thank you, Des. Thank you again. Thanks, Scott. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm Justin Defont. I serve as the chapter award chair. Okay. Uh, as you know, we're virtual next, okay. uh, yeah. later this week for, yes. our, for our chapter meeting. Yes. Um, we would normally present awards at that point, but uh, instead we're kind of going around to, to meet people one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm here to congratulate you as the 2020 chapter teacher of the year. Oh, well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Yes. Bob, is that appropriate? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, well, I'm very honored. <laughs> Yeah, um, anything, you know, well, first of all, the committee was uh, extremely impressed with the work that you've done on social media, your YouTube channel, uh, and the way that you embraced COVID and modified your uh, your teaching style and everything that you've done to, to enhance your social media it was super impressive. Um, and that's one of the big talking points that we had as a, as a committee to talk about you and the work that you're doing. So uh, that is hugely commendable. Um, and we appreciate all of you're doing for the chapter and, and for the PGA. So well, thank you very much. For sure. I'm very honored. And anything you'd like to, to say what this award means to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it means a, a lot to me um, to, first of all, in, in Florida and especially South Florida and Southwest Florida, we have a lot of great teachers here. So um, to be honored in this way, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's humbling for sure. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, it's well deserved. And again, we're all impressed with the work that you're doing. So keep it up. And uh, congratulations on being our 2020 chapter teacher of the year. Thank you, Jess. Thanks, man. For sure. And uh, let you know that uh, you've been 
awarded the 2020 Southwest Chapter Golf Professional of the Year. <laughs> well, it shouldn't because you're absolutely deserving of it. And, um, so we just wanted to come by, um, as you know, the meetings will be done virtually, right? but uh, we wanted to recognize you as Golf Professional of the Year. So at the meeting, everybody will We'll see that on you know, the video, and I uh, just want to give you a big kind of congratulations on that. Well, it's very well deserved. I'm not sure of that, but it's very humbling for sure. It's very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you're as respected as they come, and I know which job you uh, you got, Steve. Um, if you have a few, <laughs> why don't you uh, why don't you give us a few thoughts, or uh, oh, if you God. have a, a few thoughts and. People you might want to thank or, or whatever, it's all you. Take your time, we're going to edit this. So. Well, this is, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's humbling, humbling surprise and a, a great honor for sure. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to say other than thank you and um, I, there's so many people that I owe a lot to. And um, I, I, I hate to go down that road because there's, there's a long, long laundry list of people I need to thank and appreciate. Um, and I'm sure I would leave a bunch of them out because it's just uh, my memory's not that <laughs> But, um, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I've had the, the good fortune of being around a lot of good people and learning from a lot of good people. And, you know, I've made probably more mistakes than, than most, but um, you know, I've been very fortunate to have good folks working with me and mentoring me and helping me to figure it out. And sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't, but it's, uh, it's always been a, a great joy and adventure doing it. Um, I, 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 I don't know what else to say, but um, Thanks to my wife, Cindy's the best. I'm, I'm known as Cindy's husband around town, <laughs> and deservedly so. Uh, she's been a, a rock and a great influence. Um, you know, I grew up in the business under Buddy Epson office, who was, couldn't have been a better example. Um, he's been there for me for the last 40 years, so it's been a, it's been a great, a great relationship. Um, I've had some fantastic people on my staff that, is, that have made me look good and uh, have done a great job and uh, keep me up. Um, what else to say? Ten, thank you very much. You're welcome. And it's, <laughs> believe me, your peers think very highly of you, and we definitely think that you deserve it. So that's pretty nice. And so congratulations. And, uh, at some point, we'll get you the plaque and all of that. I don't miss if I have my dress up. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, that video. Um, that's one of the, as the chapter president, along with Justin. Uh, that's one of the coolest things that we've ever been able to do, uh, to go to each facility and, and see these people individually and to uh, get their, uh, in their reactions there uh, was pretty cool. I mean, we really enjoyed it. Um, and they're all very deserving winners. Um, what we plan to do is at the, the spring meeting, uh, we won't go through necessarily awards, a ceremony, but we will have those uh, that are there uh, be recognized. So you know they receive their just applause from uh, from the rest of the, the members of this chapter. Um, so uh, again, congratulations to all those that won. And uh, as Justin said, uh, you know if you get nominated in future years, please go ahead and fill that uh, that nomination form out. Um, it's a it's a privilege just to be nominated, but it really is special when you win something. So uh, thanks for, to Justin and his committee for all the work that they put in. Uh, they really did a job of carefully considering all these awards, and uh, we're, we appreciate everything that they have done. All right, so we're going to uh, now move on to consideration of 
old business. Um, so if you have any old business, um, if you could put it into the chat uh, at this time, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get the, any questions or anything. Um, we'll give it just a minute here to see if there is any old business. Any old business calling for the second time? Okay, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, give any uh, consideration to new business. Any consideration to new business, again, use your chat feature. Uh, you can write into there and we'll be able to see your questions or read out your comments. Any consideration? new business. Okay, new business is closed and that is the, uh, the close of our formal business here today. Um, and at this time we are going to go into an open forum. Um, so if anybody has any questions that they want to present to us again with the open forum, uh, please do so in the chat feature. Uh, we have received one question about uh, the amount of money in our Tournament of Charities account and uh, a question about whether we still have a CD. Um, at this time, there's not a lot of money in the uh, Tournament of Charities account. I don't know the exact amount, but it's, it's minimal. Um, one of the things that uh, COVID kind of prevented this year we had some ideas as a board to present to everyone to try to uh, um, get some money for our tournament of charities and to supply some money for the South Florida PGA. But when COVID hit, those things kind of uh, went away. Uh, but we're hopeful that we can present those ideas again to you this year um, and that we will be able to do it. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Our CD, we do not have a CD any longer. It is now in our reserve fund. Um, so, no longer the CD, but there is, that money is in our reserve fund. Um, any other questions for open forum? Okay, seems like uh, we're good there. Um, so, we do have uh, a video presentation from uh, one of our partners, uh, Signature Goff. Uh, so please uh, pay attention to this video. Good morning, South Florida PGA. It's your friends and trusted travel partners at Signature Golf. We wanted to check in and let you know we've been keeping up with the travel trends for 2021 and 2022. Right now, with Signature Golf, you can book with confidence any 2021 trip for only $750 down. Places like Pebble, Kiowa, Big Cedar, grab your favorite members and let's set you up. Trending for 2022 is the one and only return to St. Andrews, the home of golf for the Open Championship. This is the 150th plane lifting of the clear jug, and we are so excited to present this right now with zero down through December 31st. Please be on the lookout for the next couple of days for information about our book with confidence and travel policy. So the open this year, we've got three different hospitality packages. And like I mentioned before, you don't have to pay anything until March 2021. Signature Golf is proud to be an authorized provider of open championship packages. Signature Golf is making a limited time offer to our South Florida PGA professionals. Right now, if you book any 2021 or 2022 international trip, 
before December 31st, we will add 50% extra earnings for you. So based on a trip for $5,000 per guest, you would get your complimentary trip and airfare, plus right now an extra 15, nearly $1,600 cash at hand, 14 clients, 23 clients. It's your trip and your choice. The sky's the limit. In addition, for every paid international traveler, Signature Golf provides $100 towards the South Florida PGA. Contact us today via your regional director. With Signature, there's so many ways to book with confidence. Okay, um, just a couple of uh, quick things and then uh, um, we have had a, a few questions about the uh, PGM program that Jeff is gonna help us answer. But uh, we do wanna recognize a couple of people we uh, uh, forgot to recognize. Uh, our players of the year uh, for the chapter, even though we didn't have a lot of events, we still kept up with the player of the year. And uh, for the chapter player of the year, uh, we want to congratulate Dan Hayslip. Um, and our senior player of the year, uh, we want to congratulate Scott Newhouse. Uh, so those are our players of the year. Um, and now uh, Jeff will come up and uh, he will uh, try to answer some of the questions about the PGM that have been asked. Uh, first, first, before I, I do that, um, I, I did, I was, I was remiss in uh, the section awards have uh, happened as well. I thought uh, what the chapter did was was awesome. Uh, the way the chapter went out and, and did that, uh, we'll be doing a similar thing on on the section level. But uh, Southwest chapter member uh, Alan Manguson was our Patriot Award winner. In fact, I'll be uh, I'll the honor to present that to him in front of his uh, city council uh, next week in a city council meeting. So I look forward to that. Uh, but there, there's been a lot of uh, I, I would say mostly comments uh, in in the chat feature about the. Uh, education proposed education changes at PG of America and and the PGM um, issue that that's going on right now with the uh, the 18 universities around the country I, I I guess I would the first thing I'll start with and I think you're all well aware of this uh, and PG of America is well aware of this that, that we have uh, if not the preeminent program in the country uh, certainly one of the, the very top programs in the country and that's uh, due to, to uh, the leadership from Tara and Marty and Joe and, and certainly this chapter, the way uh, this chapter has embraced that program. Uh, but I, I think for those of you that have concerns for that, and, and I don't know that I can address all those in there uh, as I stand here today, but I would encourage you to reach out to Mark Van Dyke. Uh, Mark is our district director, member of our section, uh, very involved in this issue because he's uh, been involved in all the calls on the board level. But and that's really the, the protocol in, in this particular situation is uh, voice your concerns to Mark and, and Mark can voice those uh, to the board level, but um, he, he would certainly be uh, the best, best avenue for that. Uh, certainly offline, you, you can reach out to me as uh, Mark indicated in his report, I've uh, sat on a task force. Uh, the, my responsibility in that task force has been uh, more so what does the new application look like uh, that the schools uh, we'll go through to apply, not necessarily uh, the decision uh, that's being made, but more so just what's the application look like going forward. But um, certainly I, I can try to address any questions that you might have as well. But uh, reach out to Mark and, and I'm certain he can help you. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Um, at this time, we are going to uh, ask for adjournment of the meeting. There's only about five or six people that can actually ask for that. So if, uh, all right, we've got an ask, do we have for a uh, second? We have a second. Uh, the meeting is now adjourned. We do want to, once again, thank you for joining us today uh, through this uh, format. And uh, we hope that uh, in the spring, we're able to do this face-to-face -face and see you all. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best for the upcoming season. Uh, take care, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. That was great. Good job, everybody.